We work a lot with, with folks that are moving from one sector to another. We call them bridgers. You, know, you hear a certain theme in this, right? Uh, bridging business in the social sector, bridging sources of capital and uses of capital. We said, what are the, the qualities that do and don't transfer from, say, a business space to a nonprofit or social sector space? Um, the, the, one of the bigger differences has to do with culture. You know, most nonprofits are powered by passion. You know, people aren't there for the stock options. <laughs> They care deeply about whatever cause, whatever problem they're solving, whatever beneficiaries, the children, whoever they're trying to help, that's what they care about. Businesses can be powered by passion, but boy, it's different. And so that cultural part is hard for folks. The actual business models are really different. In business, we just said growth capital is easier to come by than in the social sector. There was a fellow we were placing in a, we have a little executive search business that we started because many of our clients you know, weren't getting the right level of service from the, the search industry, they were too small, the jobs didn't pay well enough, so we said, well, we're gonna, we're gonna build this to serve our client base. This fellow was moving from the business world into the nonprofit world, and he met with the board, and they reviewed all the financials, and he said, gosh, um, you only have four months of cash in this nonprofit. You only have four months of cash. Who's running a business? And the chairman of the board looked at him and said, yeah, we've never had so much cash. <laughs> it's great. So, you know, the cultures are different. The business models are different. The issue of how you get things done is dramatically different. Why? Well, in business, you can exercise what Jim Collins would call executive leadership, which is, you're the executive, you tell me to do something. Now, we might have consensus, but you are the boss. <laughs> and I got that. Now, in the social sector, how does that work? You have volunteers. Huh? Can you fire a volunteer? I'm going to pay you less. No. You've got stakeholders. You've got donors that are sitting on your board. What corporations have Wall Street investors sitting on their board? Isn't that kind of weird to have two hats on? You've got employees, colleagues in the organization that are there for passion reasons. They may have a different view of what the organization needs to do than you. You can't say, hey, listen, you don't, do the, you don't fall in line, you're going to get a smaller bonus. They get no bonus. So this issue of executive authority in the business world contrasts with more legislative authority, more consensus building. You know, business people under the nonprofit sector said, gosh, everything moves so slowly. There's a reason for that. Whenever something's happening, ask yourself, why is that happening? Or why is something not happening? There's always a root cause. The root cause, when you have a lot of stakeholders, you have to persuade. You can't force. And that takes time. You have to participate. You can't control. And that takes time. And by the way, the problems are different. It turns out, and I love business. I just love, 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 love business. I wish I could live two lives or three lives. I love business. That said, it is easier to make a widget than to change a life. It just is. It is easier to create a new app than it is to fix a school system. It just is. Why? Those other problems, they're big, hairy problems. They got all these other constituents. You can't control things. There's a million dimensions to it. Those big problems exist for a reason. The little problems exist for a reason. So for a bunch of, of really understandable structural reasons, structural around talent, structural around capital, structural around strategy. The social sector, any, you know, if you had a $5 million nonprofit and a $5 million business, it is harder to get results with a $5 million nonprofit than it is to get the results with a $5 million business, all of, everything equal. Because they're kind of these structural barriers, it's different. Now that said, there's a bunch of things from business that translate exactly, and then I'm gonna wrap up. Basic management principles. We say most nonprofits are strongly led and undermanaged. They're strongly led and they're undermanaged. Why is that? They're strongly led because if you don't have a zealot leading, who can sell, who can marshal volunteers, who can convince people the impossible is doable, if you don't have that, you won't attract funding. You won't attract talent. You're toast. So strongly led is a requirement. Management, that's not a requirement. How many people go into the social sector and say, I want to be a manager? No, I want to help the kids. I want to solve global warming. I want, I want to do something, but it's not management. So they aren't trained in management. They can't raise money for management. Management's not valued as much as the other things they're doing. 
And so strongly that undermanaged. What translates great are management skills from business to the social sector. Some of it's basic financial stuff, basic budgeting, resource allocation. A lot of the blocking and tackling that, that managers and people in business learn translates really well. But the culture is different. The structural situation is different. Making decisions is different.